Woo! <laughs> Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel, man. Let's get it popping, man. No sense wasting time. We got to get right into it. Okay, y'all saw the title of the video. Y'all saw what I named it. Basically, I'm going to try to piggyback on some of the things I talked about uh, last Sunday. Okay, remember, I kind of bailed out on you guys because I didn't want to tackle this topic alone by myself. You know, I didn't want to get traumatized by you guys because some of the stuff, um, it takes a multiple, uh, it, 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 it takes hearing it from a multiple amount of people for it to dissect or for, for it to digest. Okay, so just hearing it from one guy, that's just his sole perspective on it. All right. So, yeah, you might need to hear uh, this topic from, uh, you know, quite a few other people. All right. So I suppose I have two guests in here today. Uh, I, I introduced those guys earlier. But of course, naturally, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. All right. Uh, Keith Fazio and uh, my man Fluff Dog, Fluffy Mexicanic. So but we're going to hop right into it, man. Um, yes. Let me speak to everybody before I get going. What's up, Shade Tree George? What's going on, man? Uh what up, my dude? Baha, ha ha, automotive. What's popping, man? 69 Dark Man. What is going on? We'll probably be along in 10 minutes. No, man, it ain't like that, man. Okay, I said eight o'clock, damn it. I mean eight o'clock. Uh yeah, sometimes it gets a little weird. Okay. Um, he's looking. Uh, this is the hater, Jimmy the hater. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream, man. Uh, behave yourself, okay? Try to behave yourself. You know, it's the day is Sunday. It is no hater day today, okay? No one hates on Sunday, all right? So hopefully all the haters will take a day off. Jimmy, my buddy, please behave yourself. Calm down. We'll resume our constant back and forth hate uh, during the week, okay? It's my brother. He don't want Jack, all right? Uh, Jose, what's going on, man? Hey, Fluff Dog in the building. Fluff Dog sitting in the, yeah, Fluff Dog in the waiting room. Guys, we're going to get this cracking, man. Ain't no sense waiting, uh, waiting around. What's up, X? Lakeside Emotive in the building. What's going on, JT? Yeah, Keith. Y'all know Keith. Uh, Keith is not in the room yet, but he's coming. I was like, really? He's, he's cousin Pookie. <laughs> so, I told you we're taking a hater day off. I never went to school. All right, we're going to hop right in this, man, because I want to cover every uh, topic. In fact, I have a uh, a list of things, at least three I know we're going to uh, try to uh, we're gonna try to hit home, Okay. Uh, so without further ado, let me bring my man in. We got to do a mic check, guys, before we get uh cracking. Okay, uh, fluffy Mexicanic. Yo, 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 oh, man, Mike, who's at the very bottom? Somebody at the very bottom. Can y'all tell me if y'all can hear me and my dude, uh, fluff dog? Okay, Jason Pocario was the last one that said some training should be a requirement or at least a competency test. <laughs> Yes, definitely should be. You definitely got to have some training, man. You can't. I don't know how anybody can uh get in this game without training. So, who want to come in after Jason and let me know? Fluff, say something, man. What's good. up, popping, man? They say we good, we good, we good, we good. How your yeah, week, man? Dark good? man on it. You get something done this weekend? Uh, I just got back from the river, bro. Oh, that's what's up, man. You I was about the time. I was about two hours out. <laughs> <laughs> two hours out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, you ready for this topic, man? We're going to hey. discuss uh, a few things. I got a little list over here. I want to, um, we'll hit on to number one. Is it a good, bad, good? Wait, wait. Is it a good? Is it good? Okay, hold on. Let me try this again. Is it a good time or a bad time to jump into the world of automotive uh, mechanic? Considering all the things going on, you know, the conversion, jumping over we we slowly converting to electric cars uh we slowly converting to a lot of things all right so what i mean by uh, is it a good time to get in now is if you're um uh, interested in, in learning the gasoline combustion engine have that time come and gone <laughs> or for, let me let me do this man because this might be somebody in here that don't know you fluff dog introduce yourself man all right fluffy mexicanic i run a youtube channel as well um I work solely on Nissans, as y'all see the Nissan hat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just out here trying to teach and entertain That's what's for the up. most part. That's and it. I'm, I'm in Central Texas, so if y'all ever see me, just, hey, don't be afraid to walk up and say what's up. Just not at the shop, though. <laughs> <laughs> not at the shop. I get it all the time. Yeah. Walmart now. <laughs> yeah. JT car guy, right? Right? Yeah. Nah. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Yeah, it's cool, man. That stuff gets uh, it gets it, it, it's kind of 
flattering, you know, in a sense, you know, somebody at first, you and know you and stuff. At you first, know. it was awkward, but now it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it ain't no big deal. All. all right, blood dog. Uh, number one, what you think about number one, man? So, right now, since we're we're mainly in gasoline engines right now, right? I believe uh, it's gonna stick around for a little longer. They said what twenty thirty? They want fifty percent on the road EV. So thirty, we talking you, seven years from now, right? Yeah. So I think that's a good time to learn your electrical side, get trained up. And then if that does happen to where we're doing half and half, half gas, half electric, um, you'll you're not gonna be so blind in it as we get into the electric cars. Okay. Oh. Every every manufacturer has what maybe one or two out there already. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah. They trickling. They slowly trickling in uh, for sure. So it is. Yep. It's it's not a shocker on it, but. Uh, you said 2030. We're talking seven years from now. So it's nothing immediate, you don't think. I don't think it's gonna be 2030, to be honest. So so if a kid in high school, 11, 12 grade, you know, this the topic of the classroom is what you want to be when you grow up, and everybody yelling out, I want to be a mechanic. That do happen, by the way, guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> people still want trade. Every college is not for everybody, you know, from a uh you know, from that standpoint. Some guys do want to get dirty. And be a mechanic it's not a terrible field to be in by the way so but i was just curious how are they how would the training centers uh, go by way of training will they you know just totally like you say we're talking seven years but not much learning you can do on a gasoline combustion engine at this moment i wouldn't guess because it's fading out slowly fading away yeah so, now uh, one thing if that's what you want to do if you're 15, 16 years old, don't let nobody uh, persuade you out of it. If that's where your heart is, go for it. I had counselors trying to get me out of the program in high school, saying that I wasn't going to make money, that it's a dying field. And the automotive mechanic field yeah. in general? Yeah, they wanted me to go to some big college. I was like, no, I'm trying to go to... This was in eighth grade, actually, when we chose our career path for high school. Oh, so y'all started I, as early as the eighth yeah, grade? Wow. Yeah. So I did automotive all four years in high school. Now, this is this is gonna touch a little bit on on the second point. Let's Going to tech schools and taking out a loan. I wish I had guidance because I would have never went to tech school because I had the automotive training in uh, high school. So therefore, I already had some training under my belt. If I would have had guidance, if somebody told me, yo, just go to a dealership, you're going to learn there, you're going to get sent to school there, I would have took that route instead. Instead of taking out the loan, getting to school and all of that, going to school. Yeah. That uh, that actually brings up um, the second one. Okay, what was number two? What was number two? How do I split that over? Um, right here. Uh, do I need to go to school and take out, take out a hell of a loan? Uh, man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you the story. When I got... Um, I don't know if y'all ever heard of Sa who ain't old enough to know about Sally Mae. That's the uh, student loan that we used. What? You know about that Sally Mae? Yeah. I took the Sally Mae loan out a long time ago to go to trade school. And uh, do you know she would not go away? You know, when I moved uh, here to Georgia and trying to get a house and all that, Sally Mae was still hanging around on my credit. <laughs> We're talking 10 years ago, Sally Mae still. I'm like, who the hell is Sally? I couldn't get a house until I got rid of Sally. In other words, until I paid that student loan off. So yeah. it just will not go away. Uh, but for the most part, so you don't think it's wise to take out a loan to go to trade school. If you already if you already have some some experience under your belt or knowledge under your belt, no. Because mm -hmm. all they're gonna do is touch basics. You think so? Yeah, I mean they get they get a little deeper into it on the electrical side, but Like I said, if, if you've already been through it like I did in high school, I don't think it's a good idea. Mm. Now, well, you, if you paid attention in high school, too, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a difference, too. Well, where are you going to get your training from if you don't if you don't advise training? Because some cats out there asking me, should I go to school? Should I go to trade school? If my answer is no, I mean, guys, let me say this. Anybody out here young or whatever listening, you got to talk with your parents. You gotta get you gotta sit down and talk with your parents as far as your uh path 
you know, after high school. Okay. Uh, we are just, I don't know, advisors, not, not even advisors. We just talking, uh, we just going over our experience with that decision-making process. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So take it for what it's worth. All right. Don't go back to your parents and say, JT and Fluffy Mexican say, I don't need no damn school. No, talk it out with your parents. I mean, quite frankly, they have to be the one to pay for it if you're still in school. So uh, make sure y'all on the same page. Do not, uh, you know, we're just having a discussion. All right. And uh, as far as taking out a loan, going to school, you're going to need your parents anyway to do that. So now, but I think the question was, do I need school with the invention of the Internet and the way it has exploded? uh, Is school even needed? (laughs) Because we now consume with computers and training programs and this, that and the other. Uh, What you think about that? man? School or, or no? Go or no? School. Okay. yes, you do need some type of training. I, I misunderstood that. I thought I was thinking technical school, just technical school and period. Yes, you do need some training. Um, but there, I, oh, there's been people that I know come in as a porter and yeah. end up being a good tech just because they they have the drive, they have the 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 want for it. They're able to learn quickly. Work so, it. They got that work. Yeah. It, it 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 plays person by person. It all depends on you yourself. I know. I spoke about this. Oh, I spoke on this last week. You can't just wake up out of the blue one morning and go, "I want to be a mechanic." Exactly. <laughs> it's got to be already in you, in the ninth grade, in the tenth grade. That that's yep. that's suspicious on how that car work. Got to already be running through your head. How does that alternator work? Mm, you know, you got to already be suspicious about it. You just can't wake up. I would. I think I want to be a mechanic, mommy. Uh, no, I don't think it'll work out like that. What's number three? Uh, oh, tools. Oh, ouch. <laughs> that's a that's a big it's one. A, a fluff. You got a lot of tools. You yeah. got a lot of expensive tools. Okay, I've seen your toolbox and I've seen your uh. Okay, that without telling the amount, are you in debt with tools? Yes. Okay. Uh. That was there's a reason for it, right? You need those tools. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speak uh, that as far as, so I mean, <laughs> I, know, I know at that age or at the young age, it's all about fancy this and fancy yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But uh speak on that a minute, man. Uh, because I want to know your perspective on that as well. Now, do you have to go with the big name brands that come to you at the shop? No, you don't. We got Northern Tools, we got Harbor Freight, we got uh I guess if you're over over the border in canada i guess princess auto or something like that um but starting out you just want you want a decent impact for one and then hand tools something that's going to get you by until you can start making money to afford better tools that's going to last you a little bit longer because you don't want to constantly go back and back and back and keep trying to warranty stuff out because when you're flat rate Going somewhere and warranting out a tool is not going to make you money. That that takes time away from from the job itself. Yeah, that's very very interesting. Okay, but um, how do you feel about tools that's not really considered pro tools, you know, off the truck or whatever, but mm-hmm. their lifetime warranty, you know, that now when you think uh for somebody to even for some tool maker to offer that tool as a lifetime warranty they would have had to put some thinking in the quality of that tool because th- technically nobody wants to lose money right if you keep bringing yeah. it back into that change eventually you you know your profit margin going down so you will give it your best shot to put some quality in that tool so it'll last <laughs> you know so it can be for the professional environment because I, I hear people argue about this all the time uh what's the difference between uh tools for home and tools for work they still getting used you know a car is a car a car at your job is the same as a car at home i guess the difference there is the amount of time you use it it would be more at the job than will at home but um um so as far as you 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 we in agreement that you will need some tools but maybe not a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools correct yeah especially if you're a dealer because we're going to use the same stuff with the there's not a whole lot of different tools you need 
you know, you're going to learn the tools that you actually need. You don't need to go out and buy these big fancy sets like me. I'm sure you have a ball ball joint presser or yeah. a ball joint press tool, right? right? We don't use those. So I don't need that. Wow. Well, what happens when you need it? You don't have it. Going to Harbor Freight. Oh, to get one? To get one if I if I ever end up in that spot. But then, see, you call it in a jam because you're not going to get a professional grade too because you need it now. So your judgment is clouded <laughs> because <laughs> you simply need it right now. You can't wait yeah. till Tuesday for the Snap-on Man to get here. So you go but, back from Harbor Freight. That goes with me knowing that we don't press out. Oh, as many. The, the as number. many. Or, well, Nissan doesn't press out bushings at all. Oh, wow. Or bushings or ball drums. Replace the whole control yeah. arm? Yep. <laughs> that, now, see, that's different. Okay, back in the day, uh, ooh, mechanic, Jason probably can, can contest to this. Uh, yeah, we was doing all of that, pressing out bushing, burning out bushing. We had to torch. We would burn rubber totally out of bushing and, and bang in new bushings, ball joints, all kinds of stuff. So times have definitely changed to where some of those tools – you don't need, for instance, that tool that I showcased with the hub bearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. We hardly ever use it because now we're replacing the hub assembly that comes with a bearing in it. So why invest in that tool? You know, so yeah, you actually make a point. See now but, us, we, we do, there's the lower end models, like the smaller sedans that we actually press out the, the bearings. Okay. On those still. All the way up until now. Oh, yeah? Now, Lakes Automotive did have a good point. He says uh, six years. He's been a professional in the industry for six years and spent well over 100,000 tools, boxes, and scan tools. Being independent, that Ooh. might be the way. Oh, my know, goodness. That's yeah. a whole other ballgame. That's a whole other monster. <laughs> <that one. laughs> you are dealing with multiple makes and models all makes across the board. Yeah. And you trying to keep up to date on what's it not telling what pull up in your stall the very next car. It could be a totally different brand that you may not have a tool for. I have mad respects for uh you know those guys, those independent guys. Yep. Uh, big time. Okay. Dealers will pay for your training, but you must stay for a specific amount of time. Uh I don't how, how is that how that work with you, with y'all? With us, no. No. Dealers don't um, pay for training. Well, they pay for the training, but we're we're not on on a contract to where we have to stay a certain amount of time. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll pay for it. What's you know, the point in that? They don't, they don't want it. You ain't finna leave with all their knowledge. <laughs> What's yeah. the point? <laughs> I know. Uh, so, a Lincoln Tech had a BMW program, and if you did that program, whoever you signed the contract with. It, it had to be somebody within 500 miles radius and you had to stay there for two years at that place because they'll pay off your tuition for BMW. Yeah. Wow. Well, so yeah. that one might fall into where Jason's talking about where you got to stay for a sp specific amount of time. Yeah. We, we get, we get flag eight hours for that day for school. So it's basically, uh, a day's a day pay mm -hmm. okay. you know we got to drive so they yes build dealer would pay for your training and it's it's on a specific topic so it's not like general training like it might yeah. be for body electrical or something like that on a specific car all right i got training for the the new grand cherokee uh the new bus network system that's coming out next week next month okay mm -hmm. so the training is on that it's not you know from a generalized car standpoint you see what I'm saying? So yeah. the training is going to always be there. You never stop going to school. You know, it just. That's a fact. Yeah. It, it just every, every time something come out. In fact, we're not even allowed to put a car on the lot to sell a car unless somebody in the back has had training on it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if y'all remember the Viper. You probably was young, but the Viper was out. We had to have one guy in the shop that went somewhere off to another state for five days. You get training from bumper to bumper on that car, or we couldn't sell any. It was just simple as that. You you don't have a Viper Tech. That's what they call it, Viper Tech. You didn't have a Viper Tech. You couldn't sell Vipers. So that car was not that special to where you had to have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the same with us with the with the Hellcat Killer, our GTR. Oh, yeah? What do you mean? Yeah. We have to have a GTR specialist on the lot. Oh, 
Interesting. All right, let's get on to this uh this last one. Uh where is that? Where is that? Oh, that's the that's the one that's, that guys always asking me, man. That's a touchy one. <laughs> because you don't want to mislead. You gotta be careful with this question because you don't really want to mislead anybody. Guys in high schools, I go, ooh, I'm going from I'm almost about to graduate. I'm gonna be a mechanic, man. JT said I can make a hundred thousand a year. Uh now, what I have to say about that is depending on where you are, it, actually, it don't even matter where you are. What do you mean? But being a technician and being a good technician and having the drive and the motivation and always wanting that big ticket, whether it's gravy or heavy line, you're going to make a good living no matter what. Mm. So if you're if you're in a in an area where the cost of living is high, you know, you might make a hundred K a year because the pay rate's going to be high. Right. Now, if you're in some small town where it's not as expensive, you're going to, you're going to do well in that town as far as the cost of living, because you're going to be making enough money to provide. Okay. So that that's just a gym. That's not, I mean, it's it varies from right, like you say, area to area. Yeah, it's it's like a play. Like we get criticized from other people uh, because we charge two hundred dollars an hour of diagnostic time. Mm -hmm. Like this area can dictate such. Right? I mean, it's a lot of rich people around here. They they don't have a problem with it. it's everybody in the comment. Oh, you rip off. one guy called me a rip off because we charge two hundred dollars an hour uh, for diagnostic. <laughs> Like who are we ripping off? <laughs> like these people know this up front. Like you uh you think that's too high. Okay. So we're not trying to please you. You way over there in Alabama where the population is 200. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's not gonna be the same, and you're gonna feel uh some kind of way about that because you're not used to that. But that doesn't make somebody a ripoff. You can't hammer that at home enough. Um, but I, I'll piggyback on that like I did last week. Uh, it's attainable, but it's all based on you and your work ethic and your knowledge. A lot of things come into play. Can you make 100000 Yes, but likely not in your first year. And like I said last week in that video, uh, it doesn't have to be what – when you do your taxes, <laughs> they don't ask, how, you know, they want to know how much you made collectively. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can all your jobs together. Now we know a lot of guys don't include their side work money on their taxes because that's tax free money. However, <laughs> if you do the, your own math and you come to the conclusion, your nine to five, you made 50,000, uh, your side job, you made 30, uh, your other job, you made 20 and it all adds up to a hundred thousand. Yeah. You technically, you earn a hundred thousand a year as a mechanic. But did you get it off of your mechanic job? It don't have to be that way. Okay. Yeah. It don't have to. Yeah. It, it, multitasking, man. <laughs> you know, you can be all over the place and make even more than that. But if you don't sit down and do your own uh, budgeting and, and math, then you're never going to know what you made. But my point was when I said that was that it's attainable and it doesn't have to be off your nine to five job. So, but again, I don't want to give our false hope to the young guys. And I pissed some old guys off by uh, discussing that. Okay. But, and one guy, well, how much do you make? That's tacky, man. You should never just yell out your salary yeah. uh, altogether. Yes. I, you know what I'm saying? But nobody yells out their salary, but you can, but, and, and you can't compare a guy that's been in the industry already to what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just it be it just don't be tacky with what you just ask out of the blue. I started washing cars at a body shop and learned the automotive trade on my own, grinding and hustling. No schooling learned from the old. Oh, you learn learn it from the older guys. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good way to learn too. Yeah, and like I say, with the invention of YouTube, uh, you know, some courses are available online. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, you got to have some hands on. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's some older guys that don't want to teach. They don't want to don't show the, the young guys, you know. <coughs> oh, they're in that bitter mode. Yeah. At the bitter stages of their life. They're bitter and I ain't telling you nothing, young buck. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to be careful with those guys. I paid my dues. You got to pay yours exactly. too. Exactly. It's like, that's, okay. That's uh, that's nothing. That's something like I, I've been, I, I had an incident where I was on the phone with the engineers trying to figure out a brand new freaking car. This weird, stupid problem. Back and forth. That ain't it. I call them back. That ain't it. What you want me to do next, man? I didn't build this thing. Y'all built it. Y'all designed it. Let me speak to the engineer that designed this specific circuit. They got his, got him on the phone. I was like, look, man, this wire here, you go here, the power output coming out, it's not 12 volts. Where is the break in that? He pull up his whole freaking dial. We on a, like, like we got here. He uh put the screen up right here okay. so we both can see. Yeah, it, it got that bad, Flip Down. And, uh, all right, I'll call you back tomorrow. I go home, sleep on it. I get back the next morning, something banging in my head. I figure something out, figure it out, basically. My phone blowing up. <laughs> you want to know You want to know what I did so he can put it in the database. You know what I'm saying? I lost my butt on that car, okay? I had to stop, put all my gravy aside to deal with this warranty, brand new freaking car with problems. And uh, I wasn't compensated uh, fairly for that. So I felt some kind of way, and I didn't want to tell the engineer what I found. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he want to put that data, that information into the database so the next guy see that problem and go straight to it. Well, you, as a human being, we get like that. We feel some type of way about that. We get bitter about that, okay? Yeah. If I suffered, somebody less than somebody else suffered. But I finally caved, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, because I wanted that out of boy. <laughs> yeah, I hey. found Mr. Engineer. What you think? I'm a badass, right? Like, yeah, that's that was a good job, man. That was a good job. So that's the only reason I caved. <laughs> you ever you ever get them to contact or not get them, but they ever contact your supervisor and then they come to you or the actual engineers end up showing up to see what nah, you find out. No, nah, no, nah, I just got I just get phone calls because they all in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? They all in Detroit. And what I don't when I call Starline, it's usually just a high school guy or a college guy at a school that answer the phone. Oh, okay. I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. Where's the damn engineer? Well, I have to transfer you. Yeah. So he's there for the basic stuff. But if we got a hotline heat case, we don't need him. Right. But the engineer is too busy to answer the phone. So, uh, but yeah, they want to know what you found on everything so they can enter it into their database and make the life of other, everybody else easier and simpler. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a bitter guy. OK, I will tell you what I found under some circumstances because he's going to keep asking you until you tell him. All right. And if you just make up something, it's not going to make sense to him. He's an engineer. <laughs> he's smart as hell. He's an engineer. That don't make sense. What you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. This is what I end up doing, man. I fig I figured it out. OK, well, I went home, slept on it, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a good job. You know, so I got my attaboy and that was that was worth it. But uh, guys, did we, I hope we touched on these four uh, topics. Uh, uh, is it good time to get in? We hit on that. Uh, it depends. Uh, my man here predicted another seven years before that stuff is implemented. 50% you say? I think it's 30 or 50. I don't really remember. Yeah. So we got, we got plenty, plenty of freaking time, uh, to prepare. And there's also plenty of time for them to change their mind. Could you imagine that? They just changed their minds and no, this wasn't a good idea, but I'll be, I'll be happy. <laughs> Oh, look at all the money these car companies done invested in that stuff. Ain't no turning back. You can't turn back. Yeah. You know what I'm you saying? Know what? You're right, because then they're going to cut warranty times down even more So God. to try to make up that money. So you know what? I got way over 100 k in twos. Over oh, you've been in the game a minute. This Jason. Yeah, Jason's my dude. Uh, He's been in the game for a minute. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, those two bills are... Uh, I'm clear of the two bill or the two man. I have no, in fact, they hardly come my way. You know what I'm saying? I go on a two truck for footage. <laughs> <laughs> JT up here with that damn camera again. So, but I end up buying some because I know what they do for a living. I know, I know their thing. So I'm not going to insult them like that. I'm not just yeah. going to go there and make a $300 video and, and don't buy nothing. You know what I'm saying? One time I was like, man, what you, what's the cheapest thing you got on here, man? I don't want to, you know, Pocket screwdriver, give me one. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, I don't want him to. He cool dude, but um, and it, you know he uh, he's a subscriber on the channel. He kind of cringe when he see me doing those uh, Harbor Freight videos. 
Yeah. You need snap on. I was like, I was like, but I ain't talking about you. You my buddy, not you to snap on. <laughs> not the other snap on man. You know. But yeah. He, he interesting. All right. So we did hit on those, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go tackle some of this stuff. In the, uh, have you been reading the comment, man? I've been. Uh, yeah, I've been reading some of them. You see yeah. an interesting one. Oh, what up? My guy. Uh, what's the color? What was his name? He didn't. Keith. Keith must got tied up. Um. So let's do this, guys. Let's. Uh, I'm here fishing up a BMW motor job now. Jose, BMW. You work on a BMW, man? They, they the same? Any different? Too much difference for you? Too. It's foreign language to me. Foreign language to you? <laughs> foreign language to me. Would you even know what to hook your scan to? Like, good thing that's um, that's industry standard, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, 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 on these newer ones, I don't even know where the hell they're at. They move them. Like it's still in the driver area, but is it on the right side, left side? Is it further back against the firewall? <laughs> now we got we got airbags in the underneath the dash for the knees. So now oh, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, back yeah. behind there. Like, man. No, you don't need to go to school. <laughs> However, uh it helps. Mechanics can make money, but it depends on the place and the work at the, that is true, my friend. Uh very much true. Supra, what's up, man? What's going on, man? It's uh, good to see you. In the stream, nobody wants to train. Well, how in the hell are you gonna know these things? Okay, well, I I train all year. I train. I train guys. I actually told my boss lately though, like I'm I'm done with it. Give me about six months rest because it gets stressful. It gets stressful. Oh yeah, because you know, not every not every apprentice is going to um make it through, and that's just. Yeah, y'all do apprentices or in the shop walking yes. out in the shop. Yep. Okay. They hungry? They or they just had some time. It, it's it just depends on the actual person. Hmm. Um. Uh, what's your experience with Valvoline? Do y'all you what's y'all uh additive of choice? We use um BG. You BG? We BG. Dude, we just stopped using uh Vaveline. We was Vaveline. We stopped. I think uh Mopar want <laughs> the dealers to sell their stuff. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, we don't have no more additive department. All the Vaveline stuff, Vaveline, there's like four of them, right? BG, Mock, and Vaveline. Uh, it's probably some more, but um, we was a Vaveline store. They handed out all the perks, did they thing, but uh for now, the Mopar is like, nah. Uh, you know, sell our stuff because we make additive. Mopar makes, well, they got their name on additives. Yeah. So they figure why not sell uh, their own stuff. What is the OEM part called for Nissan? Nissan. Oh, it's just Nissan in general. Yeah. Not like Motocraft or Ford or nothing like nah, that. Nah, just, part. I believe it's just Nissan. It's Nissan part. I don't know. I don't really pay attention. I just get the part, throw it on, <laughs> to be honest. I just know it's OEM it, 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 by the name on it. Yeah, by the name, by the packaging. How you feel about OEM parts? You big, big, big on that, or I I hate doing aftermarket. Aftermarket, aftermarket. I'm gonna give an example. I did some lower control arms the other day on a Rogue. Yeah. Uh, I got word from another tech because our control arms are on back order, so I got word from another tech uh, that the import direct from O'Reilly's wasn't fitting right. That one of the bushings was kind of the way they made it was kind of bent. So I'm like, all right, give me some dirt last ones. <clears throat> they bring them. Yeah. Dude, from the front bushing to the ball joint was an inch shorter. Oh. So I could not get it in. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. Get me the import directs. So yeah. I, I made the import direct work. Things like radiator. I hate all of they that don't, market stuff. They don't always fit right. Oh. You have to finagle them. You have to force mm -hmm. them. Bend them. <laughs> yes. And it costs cheaper, but at what expense? Okay. Uh, and that's just because they can't use the same specs that a manufacturer can. The uh, OEM manufacturer. Well, is it legal? They got, don't they have copyrights on them? Uh, there may, may be some. Or uh, something like that. That's why I really caution, uh, caution against using aftermarket cat converters because the. Uh, the flow rate is never matching OEM, and it causes all kinds of trouble uh, with the drivability. Okay, that's the, I started to bring. 
when I get a phone call or, you know, my cash app option, when people call me and ask me, that's one of the first questions I ask them. Uh, what have you done? They got a misfire. Well, what have you done? What's the history? Man, I, all I've done, I've replaced the plugs, wires, a uh, cat converter. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Chances are you got a, a cat converter that the flow rate do not match or the flow rate specs are not the same as OEM. And that could be giving you some problems. Because you can't sit here and tell me, you got good compression, no leak downs, brand new spark plug, brand new this, brand new that. And it's something on the outside affecting uh, that misfire, right? Leaking intake or either just the exhaust back pressure on the way out might be because the flow rate on that new cat you just put in, uh, obviously disturbing the system. But when they tell me cat, we stop. Okay. Have you ever seen the actual size from an aftermarket to OEM? What do you mean? Like. The, an OEM will be a lot larger. Oh, oh, you're talking about the physical part? Yeah, the physical part on, uh, on the cats. Yeah. They always look different. They are so... Like, I've seen aftermarkets where they're almost half the size of an OEM. <laughs> right. And they're always welding, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> select fit is where you can get it all together, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think select fit is the one-piece cat converter. When you just buy just a cat, it's got to be cut in a uh you know welded together and yeah. people not even aware that they have recalls on their cat so they go out and get a cat because of a code just to find out that they didn't have to they just waste a thousand dollars they could have got a free cat now they pissed off at the world okay you know how they're gonna get my money back that shop got over on me technically the shop didn't get over on you you had a cat code they sold you a cat your car is fixed. Your chicken light is gone. It's just now that you're in a dealer for something totally unrelated. They find out you have a recall and want to know if you want it done. Well, I just had it done. Okay, then don't worry about it. Well, what do you mean done? I can get something for free. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful when you talk like that. But um, people people just uh got this bad impression. Do you hear the dealership jokes? All dealership. Uh, they, oh, all the time. They take, Take too long, blah blah this, blah blah that. That's the only one. Only one I can relate to is sometimes they make and take too long. But as far as being, as far as being out to steal from you and scam you, you know, it's just it, it, the all that boils down to is customers think your prices are too high, so they are slang out words like that, you know. And dealership have a threshold for what, how much risk they can take on a repair. Like I'm not gonna tackle a job that you just put down a radiator stop leak in. Okay. No, I'm just not. I'm gonna <laughs> diagnose the car, find out where it's overeating. But I'm not gonna make any repair. Well, can y'all just do the flush? Any repair. No. We do that flush, you're gonna expect it to be fixed. You know, we have been down that road before. So yeah, I try not to uh indulge. I don't know. Y'all got a threshold? Y'all got so far y'all go before y'all say no, you know. Um, uh, <clears throat> my, my boss doesn't like to, like, especially if it's warranty stuff and there's damage, like he does not like to decline warranty. He lets Nissan decide. Um, but I mean, we'll, we'll go as far as the customer wants to go. If they want something diagnosed, all right, you know, we're going to charge this. And if they agree to it, then we'll go into it with that. With that being said, we'll tell them like, it may need more diagnosis. Especially if you got a rat's nest of wires underneath the dash of all these aftermarket parts and y'all already did all this stuff. I need to put it back to OEM. But y'all diagnostic time is one hour? Starting initial. Starting with one. That, that's typical for all of them. You know what I'm saying? It used to be free. I don't know. Your diagnostic time it used, to, used be free? to be free. No, when you say free, I understand rolling it into the repair. You know what I'm saying? If they approve it. But Correct. somebody can come in, get a diagnostic, and say no and have to pay nothing? Correct. Oh, that would drive me crazy, man. Yeah, that stopped uh, around COVID. <laughs> Shit, I can imagine. I see why. Because yeah. people literally want to, they don't have the fancy scan, too. You do. So they'll bring it to you, get it diagnosed, and simply take it to Cousin Pookie and get the work done. That's why uh, we... Our, our diag diagnostic rate is a one hour, but our hourly rate is $200. So people yeah. think, y'all charge them $200 for that? No, we charge them one hour. 
See, they don't know what the hourly rate is. They just think it's some lousy hundred dollars or something like that. But yeah, yeah that, that's not the case. Hey, you know this dude right here? Uh, DL. Yeah, that's my that's my unks. Oh, that's what's up. What's up, DLC for Christ? Appreciate you uh, strolling in, man. Um, it's like a hundred people in here. What y'all want to talk about, man? What? Is it? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised what advertising to do, man. You might want to look into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I didn't even. Yeah, uh, my my guest, my other guest. Uh, I, that's why I try to make a point to say Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So eight o'clock here is what seven o'clock where you at? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so yeah, I make a point. Watch you roll in at, at uh, nine o'clock. No, I'm ready. Like Ford boss <laughs> me, Ford boss man me. I had a schedule on for him to come on. <laughs> we went through the whole stream. It's nine o'clock. I'm gone. I'm sitting on here, my mic's still on. Floor four boss man chime in. I'm not talking about he ready. Like, bro, we it's nine o'clock now. What you doing, man? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking forward to that talk, man. Uh, that, oh yeah. Yeah, four boss man is um uh, one cool dude. Uh it was another one up here I seen. No way it's gonna be a 50% by 2:30. You don't think so? Automotive amateurs. Don't think so. We're gonna be at fifty percent. They, they keep, to be honest, they keep changing the number on us. We're talking about ten or well, seven years from now, so yeah. that's not totally so, out of the question, is it? Three years ago, it was talks of thirty percent, and then I went. I, I might be getting my numbers mixed up. Maybe it was fifty percent by twenty thirty, and then they drew it back to thirty percent. Because I just, I just went and took a, a new EV course. Um, Back in February, I believe. And I think they, they rolled it back to 30%. Mm. I think I might be getting my numbers mixed up, but I know it, it, it's, they're really pushing. They're really pushing for it. JVN, really excited to hear you guys' opinions. I've been debating on going into school right this second. I feel like I'm in this exact position. Just got out of high school. Thanks for all the advice. Remember what I said? Also, make sure you sit down with uh mom and pops as well, okay? And uh, make the you know the right decision. This is a good field to be in, man. The automotive industry has been good to me, okay? <laughs> what would I be doing if I had never uh picked up a damn wrench? I have no idea. Could you imagine what you what else you would be doing? Mailman, maybe I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, my first dream was to be a, a football player. Okay, sports. And then reality set in, and I was like, yeah, I'm going automotive. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you I like no cars. idea what else I would be doing if I wasn't turning wrenches. I don't. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is welding because I have I have gone down that path. Early in high school, I was doing um, – it was just a hands-on class where we did, like, woodworking, paint, automotive – and yeah. small engine repairs. So it was like a whole bunch in one class. Uh, so. Yeah, I have no idea what I would be doing. Kids looking for mechanic jobs have no clue what they're getting into. These kids watch too much TV, YouTube. These kids think they're going to learn how to build race cars. See, that's a thing too. Ouch. You know, going into a repair a, a repair shop, we're not doing um, add-ons. We're not power add-ons onto vehicles we're simply repair repairing vehicles yeah. so there's some people that get into it thinking that they're going to learn all this tuning stuff and that's that's not what we do no they don't teach hacks no. dude <laughs> you can't teach no. <laughs> you can't teach how to break into uh, automotive manufacturer software and make it what you want you know what i'm saying that's something you got to pick up on your own or special training Right. Wow, that's crazy. ITT Institute ripping people off for 50 grand. Dang. When you say rip off, are you saying they went wow. to school and they didn't learn anything or the this the courses was taught and they just wasn't capable of learning learning anything or how I don't know. That's kind of you gotta be careful with some of these schools. There's a school in town, I won't say the name, but the bulk of the training is watching YouTube videos at a school. At a school, <laughs> we did, we did, we did pull up one of uh Scanner Daniel's video. 
I was in I, a scoop, I, scoop class. That's who they watch. <laughs> Scanner Danner is one. Uh, <laughs> Scanner Danner, a bad dude. Scanner Danner done calmed it down. He's not as active as he used to be. Mm-hmm. But some of his videos are epic, man. The the scope class I went to at the training center, the guy got the you know the the board up and the projector. He had Scanner Danner explaining such and such. I guess he explained it better than an instructor can. But uh, yeah. And so I guess you got to be careful with that. Like you say, if if people realize they can get their training elsewhere, then why shell out fifty grand, Baja? Good lord. Oh, I, I was hearing Scanner Danner's online training is like what? I don't know, Lakes. If you're still in here, how much was it a month? Oh, he got a course. He got he, he was in a course. Yeah, he has a course online. I believe last time I talked to Lakes about it, I believe he said it was like a hundred dollars a month. Maybe that's why he toned down the videos. Because if he's gonna do everything free on the video, what's the point? And he'll, I guess he weighed his option. I can make more by offering this course. And some videos went away. I noticed that about him. Some of his real good videos, poof, gone. <laughs> so, you know, you have to pay to learn that stuff now. So yeah. it makes sense from a business standpoint. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, kudos to my man. That's what he's doing because he definitely has toned it down on a Ooh. on YouTube. So Baja, Baja right here. He's, apparently me and Baja are from the same area. So he said uh, he knows the school I'm talking about. And he cussed the teacher out for wasting technicians' times. Uh, he admitted the school was a scam and wanted to quit. Yeah. Now they were sending us for a while. They were I know exactly what he's talking about too because they were sending us technicians, and we're, we had to cut that program off. Really? Because, yeah they they weren't they weren't learning, and so we were getting all these technicians. We had the program, so we were just getting all these these kids wanting to do stuff, wanting to learn the field, wanting to pursue, but they had no knowledge of what they were doing. Uh, they couldn't even perform an oil change. Mm. Uh, interesting. Jose, appreciate that, man. I started washing cars at the body shop and learned the automotive trade. Oh, that did that one, didn't it? Uh, hustling, no schooling, learned from the older guys. Uh, yeah, it's still some out there that's not as stubborn as uh, as others, okay? Thirty years in the business. Yeah, I think we did that one. So Jason is alerting everybody. A hundred thousand dollars a year is attainable, <laughs> you know. But Jason been in the in the game for thirty years, guys. So fresh out the bat, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard, but it's it's doable. Right. No, I I was mistaken. Lakes just commented eleven dollars a month for Scanner oh, Danner's course. For Scanner Danner's course. That's not bad. That's not. Yeah, Pro Tools are used eight hours a day, seven days a week, while still doing. The job. Oh, difference. Oh, well, he's talking about what I meant by uh the harbor freight incident. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh the, the difference between pro and DIY tools yeah. uh, are used every other weekend. Right. So they're gonna last longer at home. So you're gonna you might get the miss <laughs> the misunderstanding or misconception that these last just as long as these, <laughs> but you only use them, you know. Now, I, I will say something on that. <laughs> I tried warranting out some harbor freight. Uh, Early on in my career, uh, the first thing they asked me, are you using this commercial or is this for home? They did ask you that? I was like, um, <laughs> what did I use it at you? home. Okay, because if you work in a shop, you can't warranty it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Who's going to say I work in a shop? Then? That's the uh, thing. I, uh, I was like, oh, they trying to not warranty my stuff. Now they better. I need this for oil changes. Yeah, it's not like they can look at the tool and go, this was done at the shop, dude. You lying. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, you know, our tools be looking beat up sometimes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Even with DIYs can drop some serious cash on, too. I just spent $600 USD on a mid-range scan tool. There's no way around a decent scan tool. Nope. Yeah. And because I'm so accustomed to that one little dongle scan tool I use, when people come to me with scan tool questions, I don't know what to tell them. You know, what scan tool you recommend? <laughs> I don't even know who to direct them to. I used to direct them to Tim with Astro Auto Repairs, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if he's still doing videos. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's why the scan tool people stopped sending me scan tool. When in reality, uh, Fluff, they were sending me freaking code readers. 
uh calling them scan tool in disguise. Yeah. It's like, dude, this ain't a scan tool. I, yeah. I can't put my name on this. I can't say it's like three of them sitting over there in the corner right now. They they had sent me one. Now I at first I thought it was a, like a scanner to scan, you know, e, ECM, TCM, ABS, all that stuff. No, it was an en- engine code reader. <laughs> engine DTCs. That's it. I was like, so I'm making my video. I'm like, oh, this only scans engine. Yeah. Damn. I, I can't I can't do it. I can't put my name on something because people uh, would take you at your full faith. Yeah. You know I, mean? I do both and have both. Oh, you're talking about the ball joint you was talking about. Offset cups for upside down ball joints and spindle in a four by four. I haven't done a ball joint and ooh. <laughs> like I say, we get a control arm and we done. I did a video today. I was jinking out or clearing away some uh transfer case, blah blah, you know, uh real diffs and transmission, all aluminum. Mm-hmm. One guy asked me, why don't you build them and sell them? There's no overhaul kits and there's no money in trying to sell them. Who are you going to sell them to? You're just going to have a big storage of items that you can't sell because even the people that need it just wish to buy a new one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They get a better. It's all about who can offer that that better warranty. That's why TV shops going out of business. When the last time you seen a shop, they repair a TV. Oh, they throw away TVs now. They're few of them but yeah. the parts to to replace or to repair the tvs yeah through the roof it's some people it's some people got big nice tvs right now they can't wait till they break so they can get a bigger nicer tv <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it took forever for that big box sony i had to finally and then and it never didn't give out we just gave up they don't look like you're gonna die so we just gonna because we wanted a wall a plasma at the time flat yeah screen. That's what we used to call them flat. They actually flat panel TV, but we everybody called them flat screen. Yeah. That big old Sony with that. Oh my God. It just never would freaking die. Uh, we just gave up and finally put it out there in the road. Let somebody come get it. Because um, like, we'll get a new one when this one died. <laughs> it never did die. <laughs> that was I know fun. you remember when the big screens came out. Uh, you know, bigger than a 32 inch. <laughs> yeah. Because 25 used to be the bomb. <laughs> but uh yeah those days over i spent around five to six grand on tools so far maybe more you're doing good <laughs> five six grand you're doing good yes sir raging yeah by the way what's going on raging everybody in the chat how's it how's everybody oh, you know these people man i know a few of them we share subscribers that's obviously oh, yeah. right yeah that's what's up man when somebody uh you got that one fan of yours keep coming over here and saying uh uh, I don't know if you ever catch him on my video. Fluffy mess with it. Uh, the YouTube wanna be. You got, oh, you got a couple yeah. of things, dog. I mean, this one guy must. James, I I can't even understand like, what that dude writes. That dude in love with you, and, and I can't. I I'm too. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to cuss him out and tell him to leave and block him or whatever, because you know he, he come in on every video that you a YouTube uh, wanna be. <laughs> <laughs> Every video, every, every video. freaking video. I was like, "What do you mean, man?" I try to start a conversation so he can go on and on. Yeah, he think he a uh, super tech or something. He just a YouTube wannabe. Fluffy, fluffy makes a canic. I say, like, "You do this. You say this every video. Like the the very video that I uploaded two hours ago, you said the same thing." Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't get it. What, what's your passion? What's your fascination? It's about- it's weird. It's weird because he started off cool. He started off cool. I still couldn't understand what he was saying, but I tried. And then out of nowhere, just what you do to him though? You had to do dude, something. Though. I don't know. I, that's the thing. I don't know. I was promoting the little magnets that I had. He started saying I was bribing and this and that. I was like, "What, bro? I'm trying to give y'all stuff." Like, I press bam. You know? My fingers get out of here, man. Who I can't even pronounce your name. Don't come in here with that. You got press bam with my fingers. All right, let's get serious. Don't want to go to school for mechanic work, but really want to do mechanic work. I'm a window tinter. Uh, that's what we're talking about. You can get in without going to school. It's just, you know, we forgot to touch on fluffed out uh, ASCs. What's your thought Ooh. on that? Uh, you could be a good tech without ASCs. <laughs> you could be a bad tech with ASCs. <laughs> that's Is your, your job going to pay you for them? Yeah. You know, that's where it boils down to. Yeah. Does a manufacturer require them? Is it gonna get you more money? If you can, if you can squeeze by without them, you know, because 
the thing with the ASC is you have to actually be able to put that knowledge down into a real world scenario. You do. You know, just because you can answer a test right or a question right doesn't mean you can apply it. You know, it's funny you because be- there's still some guys that will jump in my channel and and bring that up as if it matters. ASC Master Tech here. My thoughts on this is such and such and such. <laughs> I was like, why did you have to put that part in the front that you're an ASC Master? That Does that mean your opinion break line? Like, I'm supposed to really give some thought into that? Like, yeah. you don't have to say, you don't have to start a conversation over with ASC Master Tech here. Here's my thoughts on that. Oh, and they'd be throwing some weird things out there, too. Been in the business for 40 years. <laughs> ASC, ASC, okay, what are you, ASC? And you could be a break ASC and call yourself ASC certified. <laughs> 50 years in the business, but you want me to crack a bleeder in order to press a freaking caliper cut back in? Like, I just can't, in, like, I can't understand why they feel the need to <clears throat> let me know that part. Okay, man, you ASC certified. What you want, dog? What you, I don't understand what you want from me. <laughs> want you to you gotta listen to me now because I'm ASC. Uh oh, yes. Uh I can agree with that. But so what if you don't want that's not your passion? You know, you in you're in the 12th grade and you want to get your hands dirty. You don't want to be in the healthcare mm-hmm. industry. <laughs> so yeah, college ain't for everybody. But uh in fact, the majority of people that go to college don't even come out doing their major. So what was the that's scary. That's crazy. That yep. You 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 dedicated four years of your life to learn this one specific major. You graduated. You doing something totally freaking different that don't even need a. Just because they found out they it didn't catch their interest as much as they thought. Okay, Dark Man. He he nobody. Dark Man, one of those guys that he remember the Viper as well as uh. Let me try this with Dark Man. Dark Man, you remember the the Prowler? Anybody here remember the Prowler? I remember. The big tires in the rear, and the, you can't rotate and balance them tires. Uh, but that's, that's right. how you brought up the crossfire, too. I was like, Oh, that crossfire. used to be a sharp that car on that lot. Yeah, that was yeah. a sharp car back then. The crossfire, but no one has a scan tool now to diagnose anything on it, so <laughs> we don't even let them come by the shop no more. They pull in the lane, we don't have nothing to test your car. In my shop, I'll offer you a contract promotion to say 10k per year to stay. Leave early. Oh, you're talking about training and you have to pay it all back. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Damn. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. They, I guess you ain't finna learn on our dime, then take our education over somewhere else and make somebody else rich. Mm. But everybody understand when you leave a job, your knowledge go with you, right? <laughs> I'm sure I'm hoping everybody can get that part. Like, you know, your knowledge don't stay with the job wherever you leave it goes along with you so you still the same jt at home or at another shop as you is you know the training stick with you but that's interesting my dude uh yeah interesting point okay so anything else over here you see interesting man i, I can't we ain't gonna have time to stroll through all on in fact it's nine o'clock uh already oh let's, let's, do this. let's do this one. this hater he just been he, he must got 10 comments in here <laughs> Like, oh, do you answering one oh, of them? He got more than 10. Oh, yeah, he got 10. He got, I'm, I'm gonna pick one out of all of them. Can you make a hundred thousand on YouTube? Yes, but you have to know what you are. No, you don't know how you're doing. You don't have to know what you're doing. And yes, you can make a hundred thousand. The thing about YouTube and videos, uh, it's all about perception. Is that the word I want to use? It's all about uh <laughs> delivery. Okay, delivery. It's all about delivery. Yeah. Right, if you can deliver and Supply a interesting video that will attract a lot of viewers. You consider technically a good YouTuber, right? A lot of people hate on Scotty Kilmore, but to me, he's one of the most brilliant from a YouTube standpoint. <laughs> Let me clarify that. <laughs> I don't know what the hell Scotty got up here or what he knows up here, but the dude can run a YouTube channel because I simply go by his numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it ain't button. easy. Blah blah this blah blah click. <laughs> all right, it's all about perception. So yes, and yes to both of your questions, uh, Jimmy. You can make a hundred grand. Uh, you have to and no, yes and no. I meant you don't have to know what you're doing. You just know how to produce a decent video. Uh, 
showing that you know what you're doing. Okay. You give me criticism all the time about, I don't know what I'm saying, but it's resonating. Like who cares that you think, I don't know what I'm saying, especially when did this guy would comment. I don't know what I'm doing on a 1 million played video. You see what I'm saying? How crazy yeah. is that? <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. That's Rome. Dude, it's got a million plays. Like, it's so obviously okay. Like, there, there's times we set up. I don't want to say we set up, but <laughs> we'll leave something in there for the comments to be generated. <laughs> we have to because, oh, you know, there has to be talk on the video. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. <laughs> All yeah. mistakes are not bad mistakes. And nobody I don't think I, I refuse to say him believe when somebody make a video, they plan on making a mistake. I just refuse to believe that. So mistakes are mistakes. <laughs> They're technically a simple mistake that you made. You can't plan mistakes. If you do, your video not gonna look authentic. Okay, when I messed around, you remember that video, Fluffy? My very first, I'm making all the money on. That's yeah. my most lucrative video out. The one I said, Cadillac converter. <laughs> that was an a revenue growing mistake. Yeah, I mean, dude, that is my number one video as far as that money. That video bringing in the most money out of every single video on there. And all I did was mispronounce Cadillac converter. I said Cadillac. Everybody in the comment, you big dumb and you can't even talk. Blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> no, the, look, the revenue just doing this. Okay, I'm a dummy. Okay. Whatever you Dude, say. When I hear people call it that, I I know what they're talking about. I don't even <laughs> catch some things because Cadillac. I'm so used to it. Yeah, it's, it just falls off the tongue. So either Cadillac converter. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that, that they clown me big time. You bro. know how hard it is sometimes to say catalytic. Yes, it was like three, four years ago. I was so hurt. I was new to the game. I was like, let me take it down. I'm just gonna take it down. I'm tired of this. Man, something dawned on me. It's like, man, that's when I really lost my give a shooter at that point. I was like, all right, that's when I started realizing I'm not I'm just not normal. I, in fact, I'm about to break the norm. It is, it, it, it is so hard to be 100 percent professional. Man, please, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Guys, uh, we're at the nine o'clock mark, and I am I cannot get all these. Um I appreciate we did hit the 100, 100 you know, it, it was 100 people in here. Uh, so it's turned out to be a successful stream. From time to time, uh, you know, I'll do live stream with guests, okay? Uh, there's supposed to be two today. I don't know what happened. I, I have to check my email, I'm sure, because he's been trying to get on for the longest. So I, it had to be something important that happened. But at uh, any rate, we'll just end up rescheduling it. Like I say, I apologize. I cannot get to all the... Uh, do not bounce around from shop to shop. Uh, that's a oh, real that's bag in the industry. All the shops are imperfect. <clears throat> I'm not a job hopper. I've been on my job since I've been in Georgia. They are all the all same, the just same. different faces. All the freaking same, just different boss. You trying to run from a guy you call a butthole. It's going to be a new butthole uh, <laughs> wherever, <laughs> wherever you go. Oh, that's no way I can get to all these comments. So, guys. Uh, yes, it's nine o'clock. That's my time. I have something to do. I appreciate it from time to time. Me and Fluff Dog will do live streams. If y'all got anything y'all want us to touch on, we'll try to set up a schedule. I got to get over to his channel and do some live stream. And okay. we got to set that up. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. But uh, so uh, it is what it is. Y'all, y'all leave some uh comments and let us know what y'all think and what y'all want to discuss, and we will see if we can make that happen. Okay, and I'm gonna put his channel information in the description. Uh, anybody in here? 100 people was in here. I mean, yeah, I can't hard to, for me to believe that all 100 was also uh, attached to him. So, we're gonna make that happen. All right, any last word, my dude? No, not really. Just uh, just everybody have a good fourth of July. Yes, when is that? Oh, no. Stay safe. Yeah, Tuesday. you got planned. What you got planned? Nothing yet. You working? I, I, no, nah, we're we're not working. I think I'm gonna relax. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness! Now nah, catch up on some relax. Your ass gonna be right in the room on the computer editing more. <laughs> Don't give me that relaxed stuff. Uh, YouTube. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to. <laughs> oh man, get them chill. You got fireworks, pop firecrackers, or anything like that. They're illegal here. Oh, dude, I think the same thing. Where is that? Hold on. I think the same thing, but the dude at the job sold me. 
some firecrackers. My HOA would down have a hissy fit <laughs> if they felt if they heard some popping going on. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to go to the park or something and uh, pop these. I don't think they legal around here. Uh, but I've been hearing them around here. I don't know if they're really gunshots or firecrackers, but I both <laughs> I'm going somewhere and pop these uh, Tuesday. So we yeah. got to go. Y'all work Monday, tomorrow? We work Monday. And you're off Tuesday. And we're off Tuesday and back at it Wednesday. Yeah. And yeah. and what's crazy, <clears throat> I know you want to get off, but we don't receive parts on Monday. Ooh. We get our parts on Tuesday. On the holiday? Uh, no. Yes. Oh, oh, no, oh normally, normally. 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 Okay. okay. So then no orders going in Monday. No orders going in Tuesday. So order goes in Wednesday and we won't have parts till Thursday. <laughs> Thanks, training somewhere easy. Damn. So your pay is based off of uh, having ASCs. That's interesting. Okay. We can't be level three without all our ASCs. And that's a shame. So some of mine, a lot of mine done expired. I gotta go recertify them. But uh again, guys, I appreciate everybody jumping on. I gotta get out of here. It's nine o'clock. Fluffed out. Appreciate you, man. Um uh, uh, Good time, bro. I'm glad you showed up because it would have just been <laughs> yeah. I gotta find out what happened to my dude. That's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching. Hold tight, dog.